shaytan will sit in every single one of your paths when journeying to Allah convincing you to go back and to reroute persuading you that the path to Allah is a dead end the Messenger وسلم, said, Shaytan sits in every single one of the paths of the believers. He is there. When you tread the path of Sadaqah, he will say, Your children are worthier of that money. When you tread now the path of ilm, knowledge, he will say, You are busy with tijarah, with trade. When you tread the path of Qiyamul Layl, praying at night, he will say, you have a long day ahead of you tomorrow, you need some sleep, etc, etc. And one of those paths that shaitan is certainly set on, wanting to derail you and persuading you to go back, go back. This is the path of Islah, the path of reconciliation, the path of apologizing to a Muslim whom you have wronged or accepting his or her apology. He will say, this is no good. And allow me now, brothers and sisters, to go through a short conversation that usually takes place between man and shaitan after having fallen out with a particular Muslim. Number one, shaitan will say, shaitan will say, let out your anger. Don't suppress it, don't keep it inside. This is unhealthy. If you keep this anger inside of you, it will become like poison and this will end up harming you in the long run. Shaytan says, suppressing anger will fill you with poison. The Messenger says, suppressing it will fill you with Iman. Ya Allah. But Shaytan will not give up and he will come back. And he will say, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Before you apologize, before you pick up the phone, you have many other good deeds. Alhamdulillah, you pray in the masjid, you engage in da'wah. You pray at night, you recite Qur'an and you take part in halaqat. Do you think that this one fallout is going to cause you a major issue Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Just the one. Look at Fulan. He's upset with half of Qadif. Look at Ilan. Half of the world is angry with him. With me, is just the one Muslim. This will not harm you. This will not harm you. How do we respond to this? With the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who said, as Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Abi Hurairah, تُعْرَضُ الْأَعْمَالُ يَعْنِ عَلَى اللَّهِ فِي كُلِّ اثْنَيْنِ وَخَمِيسِ فَيَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ عَبْدٍ لَا يُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا إِلَّا إِلَّا مَرَأً كَانَتْ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ أَخِيهِ شَحْنَاء فَيُقَالُ أُتْرُكُ هَذَيْنِ حَتَّى يَصْطَلِحَا Every Monday and Thursday, the Prophet ﷺ says, the deeds of people are presented to Allah. And therefore Allah forgives the sins of every human being who does not associate partners with Allah. Every Monday and Thursday. He says with the exception of two people. Two people whom are quarreling with one another and they're not giving salam to one another. It will be said to them, don't forgive their sins till they become friends again. Ya Allah. So regardless of the good deeds that you were doing, regardless of the lihya, the bid that you are growing, regardless of the hijab, my sister, that you may be wearing, and the halaqat that you may be engaging in, the forgiveness of Allah is blocked. The forgiveness of Allah is bad. So long as there is shahna, enmity between you and your brother. La tawbah wa la maghfirah. Shaytan will come and he will say, fine, fine, suppress your anger. And you will not boycott your brother. But I suggest give it a year. Sana, sana. So that you both cool down and you can think clearly again. Give it just a year. How do we respond to this satanic suggestion with the hadith of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which Abi Dawood narrates in his sunan, with an authentic chain of narration, as was mentioned by Imam al-Nawawi and Al-Iraqi, and Al-Albani, and Abi Dawood, on the authority of Abi Khirash, Hadrad, Ibn Abi Hadrad, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man hajara akhahu sanah, fahuwa kasafki damih. Whoever boycotts his brother for a year, 
it is as if he has murdered him. It is as if he has killed him. Ya Allah, this is khidlan, wallah. Imagine meeting Allah thinking you have done well and you, have, and you come with sins of killing many Muslims because you have boycotted, boycotted him. Shaitan will come and he will say, fine, fine, this is too much. Don't boycott him for a year, but give it at least a week. You both need to cool down and relax. A week, then you will pick up the phone. Usbu'ah. How do we respond to this suggestion with the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which Abi Dawood narrates with an authentic chain of narration on the authority of Abi Hurairah لا يحل لمسلم أن يهجر أخاه فوق ثلاث فمن هجر أخاه فوق ثلاث فمات دخل النار He says it is not permissible for a Muslim to boycott his brother for over three days. And therefore whoever boycotts his brother for over three days and then dies will enter the fire of Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Shaitan will make another suggestion. And he will say, fine, forget about the year and forget about the week. I have another suggestion. Make the apology. However, wait for him to take the initiative. It was his mistake. هو الذي قهرني هو الذي ظلمني هو الذي عذبني هو 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 he must initiate initiate the salam not me I will wait for him to call how do we respond to this with the hadith in Sahih al Bukhari al Muslim when the authority of Abi Ayyub al Ansari that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said وخيرهما الذي يبدأ بالسلام the best of those two quarrelling people is the one who initiates salam first he's better Tayyib Shaitan will say, hold on a minute, what if I apologize and I take the initiative, but then he rejects your apology? Your effort was wasted. That was totally pointless. How do we respond to that with the hadith of the Messenger? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which Abi Dawood narrates on the authority of Abi Hurairah, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يحل لمؤمن أن يهجر أخاه فوق ثلاث فَإِنْ مَرَّتْ بِهِ ثَلَاثٌ فَلْيَلْقَهُ فَلْيُسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ انظر إلى الشاهد الآن قال, قال عليه الصلاة والسلام فَإِنْ رَدَّ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ اشْتَرَكَ فِي الْأَجْرِ الله أكبر وَإِنْ لَمْ يَرُدَّ عَلَيْهِ فَقَدْ بَاءَ بِالْإِثْمِ وَخَرَجَ الْمُسْلِمُ مِنَ الْهِجْرَةِ he says, it is not permissible for any believer to boycott his brother for over three days. If over three days pass, you must meet your brother and you must give him salam. He says, however, if you give your brother salam and he rejects you, uh -huh, this is what we need from the hadith. If you meet your brother, you give him salam and you apologize, you say, Samihni, and then he rejects you, he says, the sin is upon him. And you are no longer sinful. You are no longer sinful. You have been excused. However, if he accepts your salam, both of you are rewarded. Walillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar. Shaitan therefore will make one last plea. He will make one last effort because he is set on the path of Islah. He wants Jahannam for us because he knows where he is going. He will say, hold on a minute. What will happen to your karamah? What will happen to your honor, your izza, your dignity? If you, if you apologize and then he rejects you, where is your honor then? You've lost it. And that's a point scored against you. We respond to this with the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this time he takes an oath by the name of Allah. He says, Wallahi, to show you the seriousness of what he is about to say. He says, Thalathun uqusimu alayhin as Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Abi Hurairah. Thalathun uqusimu alayhin ما نقص مال من صدقة وما زاد الله عبدا بعفو إلا عزة ومن تواضع لله رفعه الله. He says whenever a person he says three things I take an oath by the name of Allah Almighty that they will happen three things they will happen والله. He says the first is when you give out charity for the sake of Allah your money increases doesn't decrease. The second 
When you forgive somebody who does wrong to you, Allah will increase you in honor. Look, shaitan says you will be humiliated and debased. The Prophet says the opposite. You stay, your status will be given, your status will be made to ascend. And then he says, number three, whoever humbles himself for the sake of Allah, Allah Almighty will raise him. Therefore, brothers and sisters, what do you make of a person whom after hearing all of what you just heard, he insists on his qati'ah? He is insisting on boycotting his brother, his sister. What do you make of such a person after he had heard all what he has just heard? Surely this is a person who is mutakabbir, arrogant. This is a person who is mayyitul qalbi, his heart has died. A person, la yuridul janna wa la yakhafu min an nar. A person who does not want paradise and certainly is not afraid of the hellfire. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us be easy, let us be simple, and let us remove every obstacle between us and paradise before we meet Allah because we have enough to be asked about as it is. Remove every obstacle you can and accept apologies when you can and remove all of these differences with Muslims whilst you can. We have enough to be asked about Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Don't be a difficult to repair person. What does that mean? I will conclude with this. Ibn Hibban, he mentioned in his book, Rawdatul Al-Uqala, that Al-A'mash, Sulaiman ibn Mahran, he said that Al-Sha'bi, Amir ibn Shurahbil, he said, Inna kiram nasi Listen to these beautiful words of Imam Al-Sha'bi. Wallahi, they are wonderful. Inna kiram nasi Asra'uhum mawaddah Wa abta'uhum adawah Mithlu al-kubi من الفضة يبطئ الانكسار ويسرع الانجبار. He says وإن لآم الناس أعذن الله من ذلك وإن لآم الناس أبطأهم مودة وأسرعهم عداوة مثل الكوب من الفخار يسرع الانكسار ويبطئ الانجبار. He says the honorable people, the virtuous people. They are people who are quick to make friends when they have fallen out with their enemies. Quick to make friends. And they are slow to make enemies to begin with. He says they are like silver vessels. They are very difficult to break, but very easy to repair. Ya salam. He says as for the unvirtuous people, the ill-mannered people, the li'an. He says these people are very quick to make enemies. And they are very slow to accept apologies. He says these people, they are like vessels of glass. Quick to smash, quick to break, but very difficult to repair. Therefore, Ikhwani and Akhawati, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is, فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحْ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Whoever forgives and whoever pardons, his reward will be upon Allah. The conclusion is, وَإِذَا مَا غَضِبُوا Allah says they are the people who when they become angry, they forgive. The conclusion is, Allah says, أحسن, Repel evil with that which is better. Allah mentions, when you repel evil with that which is better, then the person who existed enmity between you and him, he will become like a close friend. Allah says, however, this is a quality that is only given to the patient people. It is a quality that is only given to those who have a mighty great fortune. May Allah